Welcome to the lesson on post-cardiac arrest care. In this video, we'll discuss the, inter the interventions that increase likelihood of survival. Integrated post-cardiac arrest care is the last link in the adult chain of survival. The quality of this care is critical to providing resuscitated individuals with the best possible results. When the interventions below are provided, there is an increased likelihood of survival. In fact, the 2015 guidelines update recommends a focused debriefing of rescuers and or providers for the purpose of performance improvement. Now, let's take a look at the post-cardiac arrest care interventions. Therapeutic hypothermia is recommended for comatose individuals with return of spontaneous circulation after a cardiac arrest event. You should cool the individual to 89.6 to 93.2 degrees Fahrenheit, that is 32 to 36 degrees Celsius, for at least 24 hours. To optimize hemodynamics and ventilation, 100% oxygen is acceptable for early intervention, but not for extended periods of time. Oxygen should be titrated so that the individual's pulse oximetry is greater than 94% to avoid oxygen toxicity. Be sure not to overventilate in order to avoid potential adverse hemodynamic effects. Keep ventilation rates at 10 to 12 breaths per minute to achieve ETCO2 at 35 to 40 millimeters of mercury. IV fluids and vasoactive medications should be titrated for hemodynamic stability. Percutaneous coronary intervention, or PCI, is preferred over thrombolytics. Individual should be taken by EMS directly to a hospital that performs PCI. If the individual is delivered to a center that only delivers thrombolytics, they should be transferred to a center that offers PCI if time permits. Neurological care and assessment are key especially when withdrawing care, that is brain death, to decrease false positive rates. You should obtain a specialty consultation to monitor neurologic signs and symptoms through the post-resuscitation period. This concludes our lesson on post-cardiac arrest care. Next, we'll review acute coronary syndrome.